What's good, YouTube? Hitman Ace. Make sure you hit that like, hit that sub. Show your boys some love. Real quick video since I'm running late. Uh, last night, man, was just, I uh, said, man, very entertaining game to watch, man. I hope y'all seen that game, man. It was on national TV. But um, if you missed it, man, you missed a good one. But uh, the Phoenix Suns beat the Utah Jazz 113 and 117. Uh, led by Devin Booker. You, what, however you want to interpret it, right? Because I'm hearing the narrative. The, the common narrative go around that CP3 carried us and blah, 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 this, all this and that, right? Uh, Devin Booker, for the most part, did the heavy lifting with the exception of the fourth quarter. That fourth quarter, I can't excuse it. Uh, I was looking for Devin Booker to really step on this team. And going into this game, this was a statement game for me, right? For me personally. Now, I know other people, I know Elder hit me up behind the scene uh, talking about some old – the real test coming to playoffs because I'm looking for the, like teams like this and uh, the game we got tonight with the Clippers, these are test games, right? How do you measure up against the, the best teams that we know are the best teams in the league? How, how are you going to handle that adversity? How are you going to handle that type of competition? And I was very impressed with the Phoenix Suns to, uh, to start this game off. How they started this game off was very impressive to me. Um, getting off to that 11-point lead from the jump, 13-2. I'm like, wow, man, this is what I like to see, man. This is a locked-in, focused, lasered-in team, right? And a lot of people like to say Devin Booker's defense is this and that, and he's amongst the bo bottom of the league of the defense. I didn't, I couldn't notice last night, right? Just seeing him and Donovan Mitchell go at it one-on-one, -on -one, man. Well, not really one-on-one -on because -one, four other players on the court, but you, you get what I'm saying. They were guarding each other, and um, that was a battle, man. That was a duel, man. That was a war. I enjoyed seeing that, and I, I didn't see bad defense on Devin Booker's end now. Did he get cooked a couple times? Yes. Who's not going to get cooked by, Don, by Donovan Mitchell? I seen Mikael Bridges getting cooked by Donovan Mitchell, right? Donovan Mitchell had 41 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. That's Donovan Mitchell. That's Spidey Mitchell. He's built different, bro. You're not going to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. It's just that simple. But I think Devin Booker did a great job on him, though. Um, Chris Paul, 29 points, 4 rebounds, 9 assists. Came up big in that fourth quarter, if you ask me. Um, MVP performance, man. MVP caliber form, performance. I think he moved up in my MVP conversation after last night. To come in and be the number one seed like that and you be the driving force in the fourth quarter and just a veteran that, that calms everything down, um, I think he needs to get a little bit more more respect and votes in that in that category, man. Uh, DeAndre Aiden gave us 18-12. Uh, I know this looks like an average pedestrian game from DeAndre Aiden, but just seeing him and his aggression level and, and controlled aggression, not wild, out-of-control aggression like he was early on in the season, but um, under control, right, at, at, cer at, at certain points. Now, that last foul, that foul he had in the fourth quarter against uh, Rudy Gobert, it got him an extra point. That, that was a baboon play, but for the most part, I— he was locked in, focused, getting back on on uh, on defense, right after the possession, getting back on defense, not lumbering lumbering around and walking up court, right. These are little things, little intangibles that I'm looking for from DeAndre Ayton going into the playoffs. It, like this is why I say it's a test, right? How y'all gonna approach this game versus all those other games where which were pretty much cakewalks, right? I pay attention to small details, Elder. Uh, Jay Crowder, six points, twelve rebounds. Solid performance from him. Too inconsistent with his three-point shot. Like I said before, man, Jay Crowder, as long as he's going to give us that defense, I'm comfortable with his shot. But sometimes, like especially in games like this, where every possession counts, uh, we got to at least make sure we're valuing the possession, man. But Jay Crowder got good looks, though. I ain't, I'm not going to sit there and act like he was shooting those crazy shots like he's like he's like he normally does. So I, I'm not on I'm not on Jay Crowder today. Uh, I'm on Mikael Bridges, uh, zero points, three rebounds, no assist, right, a steal. But he was in foul trouble, so I'm not going to come down on him too much. But uh, Mikael Bridges just has to tighten up, man. He has to tighten up, period, point blank. Cam Johnson gave us uh, 11 points, eight rebounds. Solid performance from Cam, man, because he, he was in the cookie jar as well, man, a lot. Cam Johnson was in the cookie jar a lot. Um, and defensively, I wasn't. I wasn't upset with him defensively. He actually played pretty solid on that end as well, right? And that's that's a shocker because Cam Johnson usually is a turnstile. He's usually a cone. He's usually a cone. He's a, you know, he plays old A defense, but 
I was impressed with Cam Johnson last night. Got to give him his props. Dario Sarge, six points, eight rebounds, one assist. Uh, he's Dario Sarge. What do you expect from Dario Sarge? Let's be honest. Tory, Tory Craig gave us seven points off the bench, and uh, Cam Payne gave us five points. So, like I said, man, it was pretty much we had to lean on our star power. And I've, I've been telling people this, this was a playoff type of game for us. And Utah, both teams wanted this game, man. And that was the, the best part about it. And it made for a very entertaining game that both teams wanted it and they played with a chip on their shoulder and something to prove, right? That's why I said it's a test. Because both teams are being heavily slept on and doubted for no reason, right? For no reason. And um, it is what it is. Now, let's look at the standards because I got something else I want to touch on. Look on the standards real quick. I'm trying to multitask, I'm trying to drive and talk at the same time. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. So we got a better record in Brooklyn. Brooklyn leads the East, thirty-six and sixteen. Uh, we're thirty-six and fourteen. So we're, we're we got the third best record in the league. Uh, no, my bad. Second best. I'm tripping. Second best record in the league. And um, if Utah loses today. And we win again because Utah's on a two-game losing streak, if I'm not mistaken. Let's look. Yeah, they're on a two-game losing streak. We're on a we're on a seven-game winning streak, which is great for us. But if they lose today, and we win today, if I'm not mistaken, we're in the first place because we own the tiebreaker. We already we've already beaten Utah twice this year. So, if Suns Nations, fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed that the Utah Jazz lose tonight. Of course, we're going to win tonight. I ain't got, nah, I ain't going to troll. It's, it's a 50-50 game with the Clippers. But we got to handle our business tonight. Utah loses tonight, and we're first place again like we should be. Period, point blank. But hit man next. That's all I got, though, man. Hit that comment section. Let me know how you feel about this one. I'm out of here.